coming at you from the Hey Yo Studios. It's the Fade Route with DNZ. Here are your hosts, D and Z. Coming at you live from the AO studio. Hey, yo. It's the Fade Rap with D and Z. I am D, and we're incredibly sick, but we've got a great show for you today. The fake baseball postseason's over, the real postseason begins, and faith is restored in Zach Wilson. <laughs> but we begin the show. That's not the title I'm all talking. Uh, but we begin today's show with. Man, a big trade. A few weeks until the start of the NBA season, and Dame Lillard has been traded. Not to the Heat, not to the Lakers, and not to the Raptors. Dame Lillard was traded to the Milwaukee Bucks. Wow. The move makes the Bucks the favorite to win the NBA title this year. What do you think of the move? And what are the expectations of the team? Okay. So we have to parse that in two ways. What do I think of the move? If you're the Milwaukee Bucks, you've been looking for this for a very long time, right? You're looking for the second superstar that will come in and help Giannis deliver another championship. And be the second superstar that will keep Giannis in Milwaukee. And I think that they got their guy. I really think that Dame Lillard is going to take a lot of the pressure off of Giannis to where he'll be able to thrive even more. Now, it did cost you some bench depth. It did cost you Drew Holiday. So it wasn't, you know, it's it's not like, it's not an NFL trade, you know, like, like Randy Gregory got traded to the Niners and it cost the Niners a sixth round draft pick. Like it's, it's not like you're actually having to send some capital, immediate capital to make your team better. And arguably Damian Lillard is one of the top 10 players in the league. I'm not going to go top five. Like, he could be on the... He could be, like, six or seven. He could be skirting around there. But he, in the short term, absolutely makes you better. And let's look at this from two different standpoints. As in, as a team makes you better, right? He averages 25, 7, and 4 for his career. So... He is a bona fide superstar. What does this do to the Eastern Conference is the question. Boston made a big trade, and we'll talk about that next. We have the Knicks are still there. The Knicks haven't really done that much in the offseason, but they have a solid core that can make the ascent. Cleveland, a solid core that can make the ascent. Philly is still there. Philly is there. Now, (laughs) they have their own drama trying to trade James Harden. It looks like the Clippers are the lead dog there. But, you know, James Harden has no leverage. Philly has no leverage because they know he wants out. What does that do to the team? To me, adding Damian Lillard to a team that still includes Giannis, that still includes Chris Middleton, all of a sudden... At the very least, you are in the Eastern Conference Finals, if not already penciled in to the Finals. Now, we said this about the Bucks last year, and a Giannis back injury derailed the entire thing, and that's how Miami took off. So, I think that's a recognition on Miami's, on, um, no, excuse me, Milwaukee's part, that it was time to make a move. That Giannis can't be the only guy because if Giannis goes, everybody goes. And what a move it was! So I think top of the conference, top of the conference, at least 
Eastern Conference Finals, if not the Finals. Yeah, you know, I'm up and down on it. I mean, like, listen, Dame's a great player. He's a scorer, and he's gonna, he's going to get you points, but... I'm curious to see what this offense kind of looks like. Like, like down the stretch, who's taking the final shot? Well, it's got to be honest. It's going to still be honest. Okay. And then Dame's not much of a distributor, right? Like, you know, he, I mean, can, he could definitely pass and he can make the right basketball play, but I don't know if he, he's not that Drew Holiday kind of point guard. And his defense is definitely not as elite as Drew Holiday's is. So, I don't. I don't think they necessarily took the biggest step forward. Like they didn't need a scorer. Like I guess the Seventy Sixers need a scorer, right? They don't. They don't need a scorer. Like the Nets need a scorer. They needed a facilitator. They needed a guy who, when Giannis is in foul trouble or Giannis is out or Chris Middleton's off, this guy's gonna get you twenty buckets. You know. So that's the only thing I'd say there. Um, but I agree with you. Like, they're definitely top of the conference. I mean, they're definitely going to be a problem. Um, I don't see how anybody could really, you know, contend with them. Um, especially, you know, if nobody gets hurt. And, uh, you know, they're, and the, you know, the other thing is, is like, now you've got, <laughs> you got Dane making $45 million. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You've got Giannis making forty-five million. It's ninety million. Ninety million between, between two guys. Between two guys, right? Now Chris is now Chris Middleton comes in at thirty mil. Okay. Cha-ching. Brooke, Brooke Lopez twenty-five mil. Cha-ching. His brother <laughs> only making two million. That's got to be a slap in the face. Oh, Thanasis! I'm surprised he makes two million. <laughs> former Nick, former Nick Legend, Thanasis Antetokounmpo. No, no, I'm talking about Robin Lopez. Oh, Robin Lopez. I'm talking about Tenacity. Yeah. He's also making $2 million, so the brothers got a much lesser payday. <laughs> and like Bobby Portis. I mean, Bob, to me, Bobby Portis is one of the most important parts of this team. He's making $11 million. Like, you're going to need that second unit to really beef up. Um, no, I mean, it's. I didn't see this move coming. Like, remember, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. We heard that, you know, the Raptors were the front runners. And then the Miami Heat kind of cooled because, you know, they just they just weren't interested in Hero, um, and um, everybody else was kind of quiet. And then here comes Milwaukee making it happen, which, you know, good for them. It's a nice move, but like we talked about, there's other parts of this deal, you know, which included Drew Holiday going to the Blazers, right? And then the Blazers flipping Drew to Boston. Whoa. Giving Boston one of the best perimeter defenders in basketball. So now we see Dame Lillard went to the Bucks. We see CP3 went to Golden State. And then we see Holiday go to the Celtics. So which player is going to have the biggest impact for their team this season? Well, let's look at the Drew Holiday trade, though. Like, Boston did get an elite-level defender to finally replace Marcus Smart. Well, first of all, we're both on the same page in that the Blazers did a great job, right? I, oh, my I think... God. They turned over this team in, like, a matter of time. Yeah, and before the NBA season started, we really thought they were going to get stuck, you know, once he said, like, oh, I only want to be traded to the Heat. And Well, dude, then you're not, you're not fucking, you're not going to play. Like, whatever. Like, you know, like, they didn't listen to his bullshit. They got him out of town, and, and they really, they got picks. They got players. Hats off to the, the, the city of Portland who's struggling in every other aspect of life with basketball right now. But get this, they're not done yet because mm-hmm. they got a ch- they got a trade chip in Malcolm Brogdon. For sure. For Flip sure. him to the Bucks. That sol- that solves the Bucks point guard problem. Mm. Maybe you take back a Robin Lopez. Maybe you take back some spare parts. Right, but you you sacrificed interior defense for Drew Holiday. Because Robert Williams went next yeah. not just Malcolm Brogdon. That's a big, big, big nut to swallow there. The only thing is, is he's hurt a lot. So, yeah. you know, maybe they look at it like that. Uh, maybe. Maybe if they're looking at it like that, but 
if you're if I'm looking at this from this is definitely a trade where both teams got better, and Brogdon definitely gives you the opportunity to move on elsewhere, move him on elsewhere because the this, the Blazers still aren't contending. They're still not even with the move they may bring in DeAndre Ayton. Now that's interesting. When you say, yes, Ayton and Williams mm-hmm. together, yeah, down low. Uh, who's playing the Who's playing the four? That's very interesting. But as far as who's making like the impact, regular season is Chris Paul, right? Because Chris Paul always oh, does that, and he gets hurt. God. He gets hurt in the postseason. He's never in the postseason. He's never there. Oh, this guy, Drew Holiday. I don't think I don't think this move made the Celtics better. Wow. Okay. I really, I mean, that's great that you got Drew Holiday, but you you sacrifice the interior defense, and Kristaps Porzingis is your big. You're gonna get wrecked down low. <laughs> you're gonna get straight up fucking wrecked down low. Like, I I've seen this act. He's a fake tough guy. He's not a real tough guy. Robert Williams was a real tough guy. So, I think that's gonna be a step back. They're gonna have to play run and gun. They're gonna have to play like Dan Tony style. In order to make this work, they're gonna, have, you know, outscore because we ain't gonna stop. Them. So as good as Drew Holiday is, he doesn't make up for the rest of the team not being there. But I really don't think that Boston. I, I'm confused by Boston a lot. But you can't argue the fact that Drew Holiday is better at this point in his career than Chris Paul. I'm not going to make that argument biggest impact for their team is a different argument. Drew Holiday is definitely going to be that point man, that defender, but he's going to have to do more for his team than Chris Paul is going to have to do for his his new home in Golden State. Because you still have Clay, you still have Steph, you still have Draymond. That's going to allow Chris Paul a lot more wiggle room, and that's going to allow him a lot more opportunity to be the old Chris Paul and not an old Chris Paul. <laughs> so I think it's going to be a, a it's a different situation because one's most likely going to come off the bench and the other one's going to start. Drew Holiday is the starting point guard. But I feel that the situations uh, it's, a, it's a better situation for Chris Paul because of who's around him and the culture. Yeah, culture is that, you know, four letter word that we've been using lately. But, you know, culture is important. Teams are learning that. You can't just have guys come into your locker room. They have to be the right guy. And I think that there are enough guys there that can police the locker room and keep Chris Paul in check. So I'm going narrowly Chris Paul because of that. <laughs> narrowly. <laughs> Fucking this Chris Paul guy. No, I mean, and what I will say about... one punch in the nuts. No, I mean, that's a good question. It's like, how, how many practices before Draymond takes a swing at Chris Paul? Right, because he's Good that life. kind of irritant. Yeah. Um. So I'll tack I'll tack these one at a time. I mean, for me, you know, CP3 is a good facilitator. Um, and I think he will make an impact on the Warriors. Um, they've never had a point guard like this before, and it really allows Clay and it's going to allow Steph to just focus on shooting. Right. Um. Mm-hmm. And he's going to hold people accountable. That attitude that he brings to teams is like, you know, it's it's maddening at times, but it works. I just, I don't see him putting in like 60 games. I mean, I, I'm looking, I think he's going to do like 35, 40 games. I just, I just don't, I, I just don't see this guy being healthy enough to play a lot. Um, and like, you know, going back to the Dame situation, I, I, I think it's going to be he, Listen, he's a superstar, like you said, but I'm really sure they needed a superstar. Like, you know, I they definitely needed a third guy, but I mean he supersedes Chris Middleton now. And he's really on Giannis. He might even be above Giannis just because of his ability to score from anywhere, right? I mean, he can launch it from half court. We've seen him do it a number of times. So I think you know that that nuance is a great thing to have. I don't know how well that dynamic's gonna actually work yet. 
So both my, of these my are interesting questions, though. Like both both situations are remarkably interesting. Mostly yeah. the Jordan the Jordan Poole Draymond thing, and then all of the ter- the turmoil and roster turnover in Boston. Both of them are very interesting stories. For sure, story for sure. And then, so my my thing is like, Drew Holiday is really a, a great point guard, and he's a great de- perimeter defender. Right? He's not Marcus Smart, but he's better than Marcus Smart. I get what you're saying. Like, you know, we you know, we, we kind of differ in what we think Porzingis is going to be and how that whole how that whole lineup and how that whole offense is going to look this year. But yeah. well, if I'm just looking at Drew Holiday and what he brings and his ability to knock down shots, play defense, deliver the basketball to, the, you know, the, the key players because, the, you know, that's Boston is hanging their hat on, on their two – forwards really right they've made that decision that this is what they're gonna do you know so in that retrospect i'm gonna i'm gonna go with drew holiday but my other question for you is you know after the trade happened drew holiday's wife was very upset posted this whole thing on how like her husband took a nap woke up and he was traded no phone call no nothing it's like you know you're going here She's like, you know, we've been a part of this team for a long time. We won a championship here. We're very developed in the community. Our kids, we have friends. There's a lot of social aspects to it. You know, she wasn't complaining, but she was just bringing a, bringing a mindset and a thought process to that. I mean, do you think that they owed Drew Holiday a call? Do you think it, it was too cold for him to find out on X or Instagram? Do you think... There needs to be emotion, some more emotional set to this than this being just a business. Well, you know, biz, does business need to be a little bit emotional sometimes? You know, they ask their players to get involved in the community. They ask their players to get comfortable, set up, set up homes, bring your family. We're all a family. But then it's like, dude, pack your bags. You're headed to Portland. <laughs> You're a family insofar as they can use you. Yeah. So that's the issue with that. But you know what? It is a business. I, I, You're you a know, great we're... player, Drew. Uh, we wish you all the best. <laughs> when when they're thinking about making a change at your job, does your boss consult you? Or do, they uh, just, do, do they just make the move? That's a negative. No. Yeah, no I'm they also, just make the move. Yeah. They just make the move. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not getting paid, but... These guys are getting paid. I'm not that big of a cog in the wheel. But that's the I'm, thing. Like they're very well, they're very well paid labor. Yeah. But they're still just a cog in the wheel. Yeah. Like that's what. Clearly. That's real life. That's real life right there. My principal wants to make a change. He doesn't consult me. He doesn't. He doesn't owe me that. Ownership and management don't owe the players that. They don't owe you that. Like that's not labor relations. Like you're, they're gonna make they can make your life easy, right? They'll make they'll give you the amenities that you need as labor. They'll give you the creature comforts that you need, but that doesn't mean you get a seat at the table in decision making, right? You don't get to tell ownership, you don't get to tell management what to do, and I think that's part of the James Harden situation, right? You try and dictate terms long enough, eventually somebody says. No. Why is yeah. why am I doing this? And that what? and that whole and that whole thing is starting to run its course, isn't it? With yeah. him? I mean yeah, he, he he is James Harden. He is about two steps away from being out of this league with the bullshit that he's been pulling. Because now rumors are out there that he wanted to go back to Houston and they were <laughs> gonna give him a max deal. But he didn't like the offense that they were going to run. He wanted to go back to, like, 2013, 2014, like, scoring title James Harden. And they're like, nah, man, like, nah, nah, that's that's not what we're doing here, you know? Right. And then they pulled their offer. It's like, listen, at some point, dude, you got to realize your windows are closing. You know, playing in this league is a privilege. You're not as good as you used to be. Yeah. You know, and you can't be going into these teams and being like, "Well, I'm not happy. I'm leaving." It's like, "Yo, dude, that's that's not how this works." That's not, I'm telling you, he's about two, he's two steps away from 
from going to play in Japan. It's it's a sense of, and, and this comes from Adam Silver down, the sense of players' partnership <laughs> with the league. Yeah. Right? Right. Players are partnering with the league. The problem is, is that the, the owner's still on the team. Like, yeah. And players get older. Oh. Like, as, you know, as... You know what? As quietly as it's kept, and players are assets, and player assets are finite. Like you eventually run out of gas, you get old and have to retire. You get hurt and have to retire. My whole thing is, all these teams gave him what he wanted. <laughs> yeah. They all gave him what he asked for. They literally all gave him what he asked for, from bringing in players to giving him money. To being lenient on when he played and when he didn't play and what offenses they were running. Like, dude, they gave you what you asked for and you're still complaining. Yeah. You still ain't happy, dude. Like and to be you... fair, to be fair, Drew Holiday was not that guy. That's not what we're No, 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 no. But like James Extreme like, comparison. Like James literally could have become one of the best players all best scorers of all time. He could have become that. But now people are gonna talk more about how much he moved around in what, like a five-year span? Uh-huh. Like, it's just... It's just unnecessary, dude. It's just like, go play basketball. You're playing with Joel Embiid. What is the problem? What do you want? They fired Doc. I'm pretty sure they fired Doc because he didn't like Doc. Like, dude, Daryl Morey may, got you here. Like, they, he, he moved heaven and earth to get you here. I mean, so what do you think is going to happen with James? you think he gets traded? I think he's... I think the... I think he actually showed up to training camp. That's got to be awkward. You call your you call your boss a liar, and you say I'm never gonna play for him again. And it's like, hey, well look who won the pony. <laughs> I'm uh, here today. Where's yeah. my locker? All right. Wait, coach. Where's my stuff? It's that whole George Costanza thing. I'm just gonna show up. That's it. <laughs> just gonna, just gonna show, show up and pretend it didn't happen. Oh, that? I was uh, just messing around. Just kidding, yeah. I don't know. I, I think I think James Harden has painted himself into a major corner. And I'm going to relate this to a situation. It's very similar, but not 100% accurate. When CM Punk returned to AEW, he was very a big star. And there's a certain way that he wanted things to be done. And the current roster didn't necessarily agree with that philosophy and it painted him out you know it made punk look to be extremely out of touch with the current product it made punk seem like just a difficult guy to work with which is his reputation in the past but he's difficult because he wants the product to be good not necessarily because he wants the product to be centered around him. There's a slight difference between him and James Harden in that regard. Punk is now out of his contract because of a backstage altercation that took place between him and another talent because of a situation that he didn't necessarily agree with. And now Punk is on the outside looking in. At this point, he's got a, he's a pariah. I doubt he's going to get a look. Like As big of a name as he is, people see the trouble and probably are say he's not worth the trouble. At some point, James Harden is going to be CM Punk. He's going to be not worth the trouble. Right. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me if they just, just deactivated him. Like, that would be the bold move. That would be the correct move. Like, dude, fix your attitude. You're not stepping foot in this building until you're a part of the team. Or we will find some place for you to go. But the other teams aren't blind. Other teams are enamored with talent, but at what cost? What's he going to do to the locker room? Now, if you look at the Clippers, like, yeah, Kawhi Leonard's there, but Kawhi Leonard didn't just say shit to anybody. So, is he a strong enough leader to overcome a James Harden? I don't know. But that seems to be the... That seems to be the the landing spot for him. But if I were the Sixers, I would just say, this is conduct conduct detrimental to the team. We're deactivating you. (laughs) Sit in in the corner and think about what you've done until we decide that you are ready to come back. 
step outside of your safe area and make a statement without saying much with FCK Clout Lifestyle Apparel. Embrace the colorful chaos and stay emotionally regulated in their hoodies, snapbacks, graphic tees, accessories, and more. Season 3 merch is up now. Get it while you can. Go to fckclout.com and get all of your needs from men and women. That's fckclout.com. Speaking of choosing who you want to be, we're moving on to football. And surprise, surprise, the Jets competed at a high level on Sunday night. And Zach Wilson actually played well, minus that fumble. 28-39, 28-39, 245 yards, two touches. But that fumble, that fumble led to the demise. The Chiefs were nine-point favorites. They only won the game by three. Zach Wilson statistically outplayed Patrick Mahomes. The first time in college or the pros that Patrick Mahomes has been statistically outplayed by another quarterback. Interesting. He's actually having Pat's worst game of his career. Yeah. So, has Zach Wilson turned this corner, or should the Jets still be looking around for some quarterbacks? All right, well, first of all, it was 17-0 in the first quarter. Yes. Okay? Yes, it was. And then there was a safety call that wasn't a safety. Pat Mahomes was grabbed outside of the end zone, pulled into the end zone. That's not a safety. That changed the direction of the game. Then there was a horse collar call that on uh, Nandi on the the Kansas City Chiefs that wasn't a horse collar call that extended a drive for the Jets. So this is what happens when you play on Sunday Night Football as a prime time game and it's seventeen nothing at the end of the first quarter. So no, I don't give the Jets any credit. I don't think Zach Wilson turned a corner. There was a lot of guys running open that he missed on Sunday. The other thing I will tell you is he did have one drive where he came out and looked good. And that was at the end of the uh, at the start of the second half, he came out and he was 5 for 5 and he threw a touchdown. That was it. But Honestly, Z, it comes down. It's it's a week to week thing, right? Because this Ooh. week, if you go if you go into Denver mm. and lose to this awful team, this team this team, Denver, gives up thirty seven points a game. If you don't go there and wipe the floor with them, I I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say. Like, I understand Zach Wilson's your quarterback and you're figuring all this shit out, but Denver bad. Oh, Denver bad. This is this game has no meaning for the Denver Broncos, but it has a lot of meaning for the New York Jets. Like, the Broncos should lose this game. They're going to have – you know, they just got rid of Randy Gregory. You know, this is this old Bill Parcells move where the team's not good and doing good, so people start getting fired. People start getting waived, traded. Because, you know, they're a bad football team. They're going to have to build this defense. They're going to have to rebuild this defense in the offseason. But, no. I believe in Zach Wilson. We don't believe in him at all. And I think this weekend, they better win this game. They got to win the game. They win. I can't see how they lose this game. If they lose this game, oh, it's going to Oh, I can. <laughs> I can. It's the reason that they've been losing the entire time. <laughs> Run the goddamn football. <laughs> Run the fucking football. Earth to Nathaniel Hackett. Run the fucking ball. Run the ball. Six for 56, Brees Hall. Five for 16, Dalvin Cook. Michael Carter had one run. One. Ugh. One. Ugh. One. Two bad drop, 15. too. He had a bad drop, also. Very bad drop. Run the goddamn ball. A better quarterback, take the ball out of his hands. You did it for Mark Sanchez. Mark Sanchez looked competent at times. This kid doesn't look competent most of the time. Why? Run the ball. 
you design the offense for Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is on a fucking walking boot. He's in the guy, he's, oh, he's in his shoe, excuse me, because he's attacking rehab so hard. I mean, I'm attacking rehab. Like, good for you. To do what? To be here for week 17 when the team's been eliminated? What are you going to do? You're going to screw them out of a, a top five draft pick by playing? Is that the, like, what are you talking about? Go away. <laughs> go away. Go take some ayahuasca and go sit in your darkness and just go away. Listen to Taylor Swift. Do whatever you need to do. Just go away. This is Zach Wilson's team now. Or at least for the foreseeable future. And how do you make this team better? You take the ball out of Zach Wilson's hands. You make them run the ball. If they defend the run, what opens up? The pass. Ground and pound. That is what's going to make it happen. And Nathaniel Hackett, wake up, smell the coffee. He's not Aaron Rodgers. You cannot make an offense for Aaron Rodgers if it's not Aaron Rodgers. So but they, but they like have a real problem, right? Because major problem. Like, like what if what if Zach does make steps in the right direction, right? And it's like you're gonna sit him down and go back to Aaron Rodgers. Like how does this work? I, I don't understand. It, it, this end game is not. I, I don't understand what's gonna happen. Because the alternative is that okay, Zach Wilson isn't the guy. We're kind of muttering. We're kind of like meandering around, circling the drain. And then, oh, let's trade for Kirk Cousins. Now you have Wilson, Cousins, and Rodgers, provided they don't trade Wilson to the Vikings where he reinvents his career and he becomes a stud, which could very well happen. But I have a question for you. Defensively, at the end of the game, was that Sauce Gardner play a penalty? No. Well, hold on. Yes. By letter of the law, yes. Because people are up in arms about it, how it should have been, how it was hand fighting, it wasn't holding, and I could see, I could see where it'd be offsetting calls. I could see offsetting penalties there because there were, there was a lot of hand checking. I didn't but... like Robert Sala's defense of it, saying they were letting them do it all game. Just because they let you do it all game doesn't mean it's okay. True. Like just, you know, just because you're cheating on a test doesn't mean that if they catch you at the end of the game, at the end of the test cheating, you get thrown out of the classroom. Like, dude, you get away with certain things, but, you know, no. That that was the right call there. He totally impeded his ability to get to the ball. No. Sorry. And the other thing was, is that play didn't determine the outcome of the game. You gave up 17 points in 12 minutes. That determined the game. You gave up over 200 yards rushing to the Kansas City Chiefs. You made Pacheco look like Barry Sanders, where he's running like without anybody touching him. For such a stout defense, where was the defense? Oh, oh Jesus great. Christ, you're, you're going to start me up again because I'm looking at the rushing numbers. Don't, oh, you're great. Start me up you, shut down, you shut down Pat Mahomes and Kelsey. And you, Pat Mahomes had one of his worst games ever. Pacheco had a career day. <laughs> so... What good is 20 it? for 115. The dude and a Kate is a sixth round pick out of Rutgers. Where's Quinn and Williams? What the hell's going on? Then there's one play where DJ Reed had a free hit on Mahomes and just whiffed. <laughs> just completely whiffed. Ran by him. Ran right by him. That's a guy scared of the rules. That, that's there was play. another play. I, I want to say it was like third and 25. Oh, yeah, and yeah. yeah. And Pat Mahomes just ran 35 yards. Where is everybody? Now that's the other that's the other controversial one. Third and 22. Like, are you getting? Are you throwing flags for holding there? Because they were dancing. The offensive line and defensive lines were dancing. They were that close, and they were that they were that. Uh, oh, because it was, it was just a long play, right? It was an extended yeah, play. It was an extended play, so they were just like ah. blocking, blocking, dancing, no. and. All of a sudden, oh, everything parts like the way Wide open. Wide open. Like, Rush it. And Kermit, Rush it. And Kermit ran for 25. <laughs> so, you know, that's that's what I'm trying to Like, this team is bad. The team is bad. Like, yeah, you shut down Pat Mahomes and Kelsey. You gave up all those yards rushing. Oh, yeah, you only lost 23 to 20. But you gave up 17 points in the first quarter. 
Like, oh, you know, oh, Zach Wilson's still missing guys. And he dropped a key fumble that cost them a game. How about this, Z? The Kansas City Chiefs had the ball with six minutes left in the fourth quarter, and they never gave the ball back. So much of this ball to defense. They never gave the ball back. What are you guys doing? But that boils down to coaching. That really boils down to coaching. Andy Reid. It boils Reed, down to a lot of things. It boils down to this team isn't good. But look at it, aren't but, nothing, there's nothing good about this team. But look at it. Robert Sala getting himself an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for going ape shit. The friggin' vein in the side of his head is bulging out. And then you have Andy Reid, cool, calm, and collected. She's like, oh, ho, hum. We're just going to march down. Yeah. We're going to do what we do because we do what we do. Like that. That attitude comes from the head down. Yep. So right. if you play and you coach like a lunatic, your yep. team is going to be a lunatic team. Yep. Yeah, but if you're calm and if you're at the head of the class and you're like, I got this, your team will take on the mentality of the coach. That's, That's the whole thing. It's like Robert Robert Sala is just he's a, he's a coordinator. That's who he is. That's his. That's what he is. Like think about it this way. I I don't know. Let me see if I can look up his record, but. Like, if he has a losing record this season and they don't fire him, like, he's it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. He's going to get a pass because of the Aaron Rodgers thing. I guarantee you he'll get a pass because of the Aaron Rodgers thing. So, he is 12-26 and 26 as a head coach. Mm-hmm. Okay? That checks out. So, if let's say, let's say the Jets lose 10 games this year. Let's say they lose 10 more games, right? So that means he's going to have 36 losses. And what? uh, He'll have six. Yeah, he'll have 18 wins. 250 win percentage. And you're going to bring that guy back? They're so strapped. They're so strapped because they can't get rid of anybody. They can't fire Hackett. They can't fire Sala. They can't do anything with Zach. They are. <laughs> so, I mean, and they're Green Bay's playing well, so they can't even hope that LaFleur gets fired and they can go get LaFleur. Yeah, that's the other thing. Nobody talking shit about the GM of the Green Bay Packers now. Mm. Seems like he made the right move. His quarterback, well, didn't, his quarterback didn't play that great this weekend, but he, he looks legit. He looks like give him a year or two and he's going to be all right. He's on the he, field. Listen. I think we talked about this before, private shows. Jordan Love looks in command. Like, I'm in control of this. I can put the football wherever I want. We got this. I'm good. Like, you know, he, he the ball gets tipped. He makes a wrong read. But you don't count him out. You don't count them out. And he doesn't look scared. He's getting there. Yeah, he's getting there. He absolutely is. But, again, your offense takes its cues from the head of it, which is the quarterback. If he's calm, cool, and collected, the offense will be calm, cool, and collected. If the off- if the quarterback is frazzled, then you're going to have guys not knowing what the fuck is going on. So, at the end of the day, you have to just chalk it up to the fact that you got this one wrong. Like if you're the Jets, like you, you knew you were, you knew you were gambling, right? You, you split ten the blackjack table. You brought in a 39 year old guy. You hedged your bet. Now you got to lie in it at least for a year. I Sala is gonna get a pass. I already know this. Um, He's gonna. I mean, think about it. Like you got, you banked your whole season on this, and four <laughs> plays, it's done. Like, I've seen it, yeah. it, it, it's that Family Guy meme. It's opening day and the season's over, except it's the Met, it's, the, it's the, the Jets instead of the Mets. Like the the Jets season this year is a Family Guy skit. Chalk it up, take your lumps, come back next year, and just ride it out for what it is, and hope that you know because you made a deal with the devil, right? This Faustian bargain that I mentioned before. You made a deal with the devil. And now you're going to have to abide by the terms of it until it ends. Avoid messy accidents. 
Get better stopping power with your brake pads. Callahan brake pads. You never know when you'll be driving in the road and there will be a truck tire that you need to avoid and save your family. Callahan Auto. We really care about what's under your hood. Speaking of comebacks, there were none. There were absolutely none. <laughs> the baseball postseason is underway. The new wild card round has come and gone. Each series was a sweep. It was a two-game sweep. The Blue Jays got done in by the Twins. The first time the Twins have won a playoff series in 21 years. You can legally drink now. The last time, if you were born the year the Twins won a playoff series, you now can legally drink. Texas Rangers beat down the Rays in front of 19,000 people each time. Which is a great crowd for them. Just it's playoffs. The Phillies, ugh, they fried the fish. They absolutely fried the fish. And the D-backs bossed around the Brewers, possibly sending Craig Council to the Mets. So, is it time to go back to the old format? Or do we need to keep expanding these playoffs and letting even more teams in and keeping these mediocre series afloat. Yeah, man, I'm just old school on this. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, you don't care. Like, I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't, I didn't need to see that. I didn't need to see the Phillies destroy the Marlins because the Phillies are a much better team. I didn't need to see the Twins, who won their division, have to play the Blue Jays, who were just not ready for the test this year like it just it's just it's just a listen i i understand like you want to give everybody a shot and most people were competing all the way until (coughs) excuse me until the last week of the season to get this spot but what good is it and then to top to to make matters even worse now the braves got to face the phillies that sucks i don't want to face the phillies man that's it stinks. Like there's no reseeding. It's the bracket is the bracket, which is horseshit. Um, but no, nah, I, I don't I don't need to see it. I don't know who really enjoyed it other than the people like you know who who are part of those fan bases. We're kind of hopeful that you'll get into the playoffs. But I'm done with it. It's stupid. Go away. So one team in the entirety of this time has gone to a, a, a game three. That would be the New York Mets. One team. And they shouldn't have gone to a game three either. So, that's not good. This is not good product. Why am I watching this? Why am I watching the the Miami Marlins getting beat down? Yes, wonderful. You made a playoff, right? If you count COVID, this is two times in four years that the Miami Marlins have made the playoff. And they have not looked good either time because they're not playoff team. They're very good, but they're not a playoff team. Look at the Rays. The Rays were a 100-win team this year. Out on the rest. Because they ran up against another 100-win team, or close to a 100-win team in the Texas Rangers. It's absolutely mind-boggling to me that we're letting in mediocre competition in order to do what? Goose a, a TV rating? Is that what this is? To give K Rod three more days? To oh god, that again? that's awful too. Listening to those two guys, oh yeah. god, like just stick to fucking Yankee games. I don't want to hear you guys. Oh, yeah. brutal. I, you know, brutal. I, I don't. I don't understand. Personally, that that's just me. I don't understand that we're putting this in. We're diluting the product for what? Now, here's a crazy idea. And you might think I'm crazy. Eh, whatever. You borrow from the NBA. Hear me out. Those last two wild card spots, you shorten the season to 154. You have your division winners. And the last two wild card teams are decided by a four team playoff. So that whoever's left. So you'd have the mat. You'd still have your Mariners. You'd still have your Rays. 
You'd still have your Rangers. You'd, you'd still have these teams bubbling. But now, you're fighting for a spot. Now, yes, the results still may happen if they get swept. But you're also building momentum. Right? Who's to say that that wild card team doesn't come out of this wild card tournament and, like a buzzsaw, go to the World Series? I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that. But, but I don't. But I don't. I don't want to see. I don't that like part. two out of three. I really don't like. Two I, I don't. Out of three. I don't. But I, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see the Rays. I don't want to see the Rays beat a good team. I don't want to see the Marlins beat the Phillies. I don't want to see that. I want to see the best teams move forward. An upset here or there is fun, sure, but I don't want to be cheated out of getting to see the best baseball I could possibly see. Like, what are we going to do? You're going to see the Marlins? Oh, beat the Phillies? Oh, they upset the Braves, and then they get to the World Series, and they get swept? Nobody knows anybody on the Marlins? Come on, it's just it's silly. The Phillies banging the ball. They deserve to be where they are. The twins, the twins shouldn't have to prove themselves to anybody. They won their division, man. Like, come on, this is bullshit. And the Rangers just, just destroyed the Rays, who, who just were playing bad the second half of the, the after the All Star break. They didn't, they just weren't a playoff team. They're done, so. And now what you've done is right. Now you've cheated yourself, right? Because now. The range, I think the Rangers are playing the O's, right? Mm-hmm. So now the Rangers just played two games. So you can look at it two ways. You can look at it as okay, the Rangers warmed up. So now they're going to play Baltimore. Or you can look at it as now they're gonna go play Baltimore, but they gotta start their number three against Baltimore's number one. Like why sh- why shouldn't we be able to get the best of the Texas Rangers against the best of of the Baltimore Orioles? That's what the playoffs are about. It's not about this. Not sympathy. Not everybody gets a, a trophy. This is participation. You weren't good enough this year. Now, now, what you've suggested, I can get on board with that. That's fine. I can get on board with something like towards the end of the season, last couple of games, you scratch those out, and and you you play to you know get a final spot. That's fine. But come on, man. It's just it's just trash. It's just trash. And it's all about money. It's all, you know, the answer to everything is money and it's ratings and it's everybody's, you know, all these fan bases because they want, they want that playoff revenue. They don't, you know, not everybody gets it every year. No, it's Come true. On. But statistically, if you're looking at it, right, if you're looking at it by the standing, the second worst team in the playoffs were the Minnesota Twins. The second worst. All right. But they still won their division, right? That's the goal. Isn't that the goal of every team? The goal of the, every team is to win your division. We take care of we take care of what's in house. We take care of what's in our division. We're built to beat the teams in our division. So they did what they were supposed to do. They get penalized for that. Come on. Well, yeah, and, and, and oh, you now and you got you got Sonny Gray out there dealing, dude, dealing. My man, my man is back. I'm proud of that guy. Proud don't, of say, don't speak to don't speak it into existence too quickly. Because guess what, they drew the, <laughs> the they got the Astros next. That's okay, but I'm I'm proud of him. Like, you know, you remember he was with Oakland, and then he gets he goes to the Yankees and is awful there. He gets out of pitch. <laughs> and then he he goes to since I think he, then he went to Cincinnati, and now he's remember how to pitch. <laughs> he's with the Twins, and he's their he's their best pitcher. He had a sub, I believe he had a sub three ERA this year. He's playing phenomenal baseball. Good now, for him. Think about the, think about the, think about the stain of the Yankees that's on this <laughs> playoff too. You got you have Aaron Hicks on the Orioles. Evaldi. Evaldi. <laughs> Jordan Montgomery. Oh, Jordan so, pitched. Jordan pitched good too. <laughs> Joey Gallo. Gallo. Sonny Gray. Yankees everywhere. Who's your favorite Yankee still in the postseason? Josh Donaldson was on the Brewers. <laughs> he was. <laughs> he was. Somehow Josh Donaldson qualified for the playoff roster. That's amazing. It's um, it's insane. You had Chad Green, although I don't, I don't know if Chad Green pitched for the Blue Jays. Oh, wow. I forgot about him. Yeah. So, of the guys that I'm happiest for, <laughs> I'm going to say Monty. 
I'm going to say Jordan because you know what? The Yan- he proved that the Yankees made a mistake. I want to see Aaron Hicks win the World Series MVP. That's what I want to see. Could you imagine Game 7 of the World Series walk-off home run Aaron Hicks? I'd love it. I love and it. They build a statue for him in Baltimore and next he, to Babe Ruth. Be he, awesome. does the, he does the Serrano testicle strut as he's going <laughs> around the bases. That'd be so great. Oh, my God. I'd love it. Oh my but, god! But anyway. now that the riff rap, now that the riff rap is out. Like, yeah, the riff rap is out. It's out. Like you know, who is left? We have the Dodgers. We have the Diamondbacks. We have the Orioles. We have the Rangers. We have the Astros, the Twins, and then we have. Uh, we have the Phillies and the Braves. So, is there gonna is there an upset? in mind or uh is this just gonna end up being like brave dodgers chalk? and yeah is it gonna chalk? be chalk? you think so i'm tired no i'm terrified i'm terrified of the phillies that's the one team i didn't want to face man because they bang the ball dude they bang the ball and they got two pitchers that can shut you down yeah shut you down ma i'm scared i am fucking scared i am terrified of the phillies um, I don't think the Dodgers have anything to be worried about. I don't think the, the Astros are going to slap the Twins, right? I would think so. Yeah. The Orioles-Rangers series could be a little interesting because the Orioles don't pitch as well. You know, the and the Rangers can score a lot. I'm cur- I can't wait to see what Camden Yards is like, though, for a playoff that's gonna game. Be, that's going to be crazy. Right? That's going to be good, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be exciting, but I am, I am, so I'm looking forward to watching Rangers Orioles. But as far as upsets are concerned, I am absolutely terrified of the Phillies. And that's the other part. They don't reseed this shit. The Braves should be facing the Diamondbacks. Why are they mm-hmm. facing the Phillies? And the other thing that's stupid about this is you got, you got two series where you're playing division, their, their division games. You got the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers, and you got the Phillies and the Braves. They've we played them 13 times this year. Yeah. This isn't anything new. Why am I watching this? Like, who the fuck is running Major League Baseball? What the fuck, man? I don't know why you're not receding. It doesn't make eight. any sense. So, like, we're so think about it this way: like, the Braves were eight and five against the Phillies this year. The Phillies mm-hmm. are good enough where they could they could totally win a five game series, man. No, oh, completely. <laughs> the, 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 this is this is definitely a situation where, like I said before, about building momentum, right? The Braves yeah, have been off. The Braves have been sure. off for a week. You yeah. can't simulate. You can't simulate playing. No. no. So as good as they've been, if the bats go cold in a three-game span, you can get swept out of the playoffs before you even get started. Well, they got to. They got to like win game one. Year. They got to win game. Strider's pitching in game one. They got to win that game because. Fr- Freed is, is pitching in game yeah. two. And, well, I mean, you know what? Strider, Strider's a little bit overrated. Let's be here. He strikes out a lot of guys. He strikes but out. He's not ERA close to four. But like, he does. Be, he's not Garrett Cole. Let's he's not, not. Oh, don't please. Come on. You're going you're gonna to pull the Garrett Cole card here? Look at Garrett Cole's numbers. Look at Spencer Strider's numbers. Oh, he's not God. that guy yet. He's not that guy yet. He's definitely not that guy. But did you have to say Garrett Cole? Because you've used somebody else. I'm gonna. I'm using the guy who's the AL Cy Young Award winner, and there, if Strider, Strider is a serious uh, consideration for the NL Cy Young Award winner. So I'm doing an apples to apples comparison. So okay, fine. Pick your guy. Who <laughs> would you rather be? I just dislike Clayton? Garrett Cole, man. Just Clayton like, Kershaw. Okay, he's not Clayton Kershaw either. Well, no. The, so, so the thing is, is like I, I'm okay. I understand that he's got a pretty high ERA, but I'm okay with him starting against the Phillies because they're they're a big swing and miss team and when I say that is like they 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 can crush the ball and I think he can get it by them I think he can get off on that he can get nine strikeouts and give him four hits like it just he could do that now when Freed pitches oh, I don't know what the hell is going to happen that Freed could be out in two innings <laughs> like you know well, I also have a question what's Charlie Morton's status Morton uh, is there's somebody you need. Yeah. Um I don't know. I would assume he pitches game three. 
I don't, I'm not sure if he's healthy. If he's healthy, like, I'm, I'm not sure of his injury status. Yeah, so, I don't know. I don't know what the plan is there. I like Charlie, though. He's fine for me. Yeah, Charlie Charlie has definitely developed into a really good pitcher towards the tail end of his career. He's, he's really great guy. pitcher his whole career. Why is why tails towards the end? He's got what? He went to the World Series with the, the Rays. He won it with the Astros, and then he won it with the Braves. I think, right? He was mediocre until he got to Houston. Yeah. And then, well, like all things, like <laughs> media, until I got to Houston. But <laughs> they started having him throw high fastball. Like, dude, you actually throw hard. Like, mm. why Why are you dinking and dunking? You throw hard. It's like, oh, shit, I, throw, I do throw hard. How about, how about that? You, mm. uh, and you unlock the new level of Charlie Morton. Mm-hmm. So that that's all I mean by that, is that Charlie Morton was okay, and then he turned a corner from his time in Houston. As far as upsets go, I don't necessarily see the Rangers as an upset for the Orioles. Why not? You have the Rangers were built for this. As, okay. as, as much as we as much as we maligned them and <laughs> joked about it, all you they had a really rough. shitty second half though. They did, but you know what? They have the veteran wherewithal that they can withstand some of this, and I think that would be okay. The Orioles might be oh, and they and the Orioles had a week off. So they may very well be you know, a little too neophyte for this. It might they, they might just be a little ahead of their time. But kudos to Rushman, kudos to Henderson, kudos to that team. And Brandon Hyde should be manager of the year. I don't want to hear anything. Brandon Hyde's your manager of the year. So maybe Bochi, but you know what? Brandon Hyde's better. And this season. I wouldn't necessarily call it an upset. I wouldn't call that an upset. Those are these are two evenly matched teams. The twins knocking off the Astros? Mm. The Astros are sort of a legacy at this point in time. The Twins finally advanced to the second round for the first. They're Tracy McGrady. This is the <laughs> first time, first time in 21 years. Well, come on, like, it's a, a, it's fake, it's fake. Come on. I know it's fugazi, but still, like it's a statistic, and we're looking at it. Like the Diamondbacks knocking off the Dodgers would be an upset. Like those, those were upsets. I don't see the Phillies and Braves as an upset. I don't see the Rangers and the Orioles as upsets. I see them as even. Those are pickups, in my opinion. Now, if the Diamondbacks somehow pulled off that upset and knocked out the Dodgers, holy shit. Like, that would, like, some, somebody's head would roll in LA. Yeah. Like, because that is absolutely. Not amazing. likely, though. They just don't hit enough. No. It, they, they don't. But you definitely had Longoria playing like it was, you know, 2007 again. So good for, good for having Longoria. He seemed to, you know, kind of have a fire lit under him, but. It wouldn't surprise me if we get chalk. In, in, in all likelihood, chalk is coming. Hope you're right, You'll be man. prepared for it. Yeah, but so. the most intriguing one, if there would be, if there would be a non-chalk pick, you'd have to battle Texas. You'd have the Rangers versus the Astros in the ALCS. That could be interesting. Very regional story. A very let's be real. It is a regional story. But it's something that is that could be very entertaining. You have the young upstart Rangers against the dynasty or the establishment in the Astros. And you know, does Max Scherzer come to pitch? You have Scherzer versus JV. You have uh, a few storylines. You have Bochi trying to, you know, prove that he still has what it takes and you know that San Francisco was kind of uh, a miss in getting rid of him. Now since they already got rid of Gabe Kapler, but I, I'm how, does Gap, uh, how does Gabe Kapler lose his job, but Aaron Aaron Boone doesn't? I don't know. Well, clearly Zaidi doesn't have the uh, either he doesn't have the stroke or like he's just it, it's the ultimate in results based. The like, Aaron Boone. Like, they, I read a report that they're trying to toughen him up. They're going to make him a tougher manager next year. <laughs> they throw him in a ring? Like, what is, I don't they know. What, what, what are you going to do? What does that mean? What does that mean? We're going to toughen him up. This is what the analytics up. team came back with? How much are we paying you? <laughs> and that's the other thing. They're also not having the independent audit of their analytics department now. They're going. Oh, they're to, not doing it anymore. No, they're going to observe a company and see how they run their <laughs> analytics, and then they're going to copy it. <laughs> because that, because a, com- a Fortune 500 company's analytics work the same as Major League Baseball analytics. Brilliant. Just Bleh. absolutely brilliant, Bleh. absolutely brilliant things coming out of the Bronx. Like I, I just, <laughs> just absolute 
brilliant out of 163. I don't understand what's going on right now. (laughs) Meanwhile, like lots of moving and shaking, right? Nevin is out with the Angels. Buck is out with the Mets. Like that was kind of surprising, but also Billy Epler is out. We're going to talk about him in a little bit later on the Alleged Superstar. But (laughs) there's a lot of change happening right now, and you know teams need to. This is the time they need to figure out what they want to be because. Look at the Orioles, look at the Rangers, look at the Braves, look at the Dodgers. Like those are the those are the pinnacles right now. Those are the organizations you want to be. They're young and good, or they're deep and star studded. Those are really the two models. So choose what you want to be. Some are more analytics than others, some are more gut based than others. Choose what you want to be. You're at a seminal moment right now. You're at the crossroads. Choose who you want to be. If you want to get on the action, we want to hear from you. Hit us up, faderoutemail at gmail.com. Slide in our DMs on IG at Podcast. Drop us a DM on Twitter at FaderoutDNZ. Comment on our YouTube channel, The Fade Route with DNZ. Questions, comments, picks, segment suggestions, you name it, we want to hear from you. Get at us, in crowd. The choice is yours. Swipe left or swipe right. All right, boys and girls, especially our online dating fans. We have a statement, and if you like it, you swipe right. If you don't like it, you swipe left. Swipe left or swipe right. Number one, Brian Dayball, Saquon Barkley, and Daniel Jones the rest of the season. I'll let you go first on this one. Oh, man. I, I'm going to break it up into three. Oh, oh okay. I'm, I'm breaking it up into three. I'm not going to oh, lump okay. them together. All right. All right. I'm swiping right on Brian Dayball. I think that eventually he's going to yank Kafka down by the shirt tail. He's going to say, I'm calling the fucking play. That might make things a little bit better. He's going he's gonna to take control more of the situation. Saquon, this is a tough year for running backs. And Saquon is just one of many. Now, Jonathan Taylor's coming back to camp, and he's surveying the situation, and it's kind of not what it was. You know, it's much worse. Saquon is going... I'm going to swipe left on Saquon. I think you're going to get a little bit, but this team is going to be behind a lot. Just looking at that defense. I'm, you know what? I'm swiping left on Wink fucking Martindale, Martindale too. What the hell happened between last year and this year? Like, what happened to the Baltimore Ravens defense that you put in? Who are these guys? It's like the, you know, the parakeets. Like, what the fuck is this? You're playing soft coverage. Ooh, you Why? Miami you're getting Miami. torched. Torched. They, they put up 70 against the Broncos. The Broncos are arguably better than the Giants right now. Like, I don't know what Wink Martindale is going to dial up for this, but Mike McDaniel, he's toking his vape, and he's having a good old time down in Miami. <laughs> now we just got Chase Claypool. So he's got a new toy. Like Mike, Mike, Mike McDaniel got a new toy to play with. I'm like what the fuck? But I'm swiping left on Wink. I'm swiping left on Saquon. He's a non-factor because they're going to be behind a lot. And I am swiping huge left on Daniel Jones. The dude looks like a deer in headlight. He doesn't know what's going on. He got the freaking tablet thrown at him <laughs> by table. <laughs> that was funny. It's like he Dayball looked like me. When I got a student who's just like looking at me, like, like, what the fuck? Come on, come on. And Dayball is looking at him like, what the fuck do you expect me to do? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take the test for you. I'm not, I'm not gonna, <laughs> you know, you're asking me these softball questions. I'm not taking the test for you. I'm not gonna play quarterback for you. I'm not put the pads on. Strap your big boy pants on. You got the money. You want the money? You got the money. Now you gotta play. I was not a Daniel Jones guy to begin with. You you know this. I am very loud on that. I was giving him the benefit of the doubt, and that's gone. That's gone. Bring me Colt McCoy. 
Ter- Colt McCoy, Terod Taylor. Right? I'll take a drunken Kerry Collins. Oh, right? drunk Kerry Collins, man. Going to the Super Bowl. Drunk Kerry Collins aired it out, man. He, he was good. Kerry he Collins had drunk Kerry Collins. We did. Kerry Collins took his team to the Super Bowl. Let's not let's be forget. Um yeah, so let's, I'm swipe, I'm swiping I'm swiping left on all of them. Um I just I don't see any creativity on offense. None. Um I don't really I still I this is three weeks in, right? Four weeks in. Yeah. I still don't know what the game plan was for any of the games. I don't I don't understand mm-hmm. what they're trying to accomplish, what they're trying to establish offensively and what the scheme is mm-hmm. defensively. Saquon, I mean, he'll get hurt again. This is what he does. So um, I gotta say though, Matt Breida looked a hell of a lot better in this system than Saquon has this year. He's Matt a smaller Breida dude, more... though. He's a smaller yeah. dude. I don't know if he could take the hits for a whole season. Oh no, definitely not. He's part of like he was part of a, <clears throat> a, a, he was part of the troop in Buffalo. He can't be the guy, but he's definitely he, he, he's definitely being utilized better and being utilized more. I can go for more of that, but you need offensive <sighs> creativity, like you were saying. Yeah, and then for Daniel Jones, I mean, I'm swiping left on that too. Like it's, it's just, I don't see any growth. Um, you know, he's he's bottom twenty of the he's the he's the bottom twenty of the league in my opinion. Um, but the other thing, he doesn't have the. I would give him a break, and then he doesn't have help. Like, come on, he's throwing the ball to Jalen Hyatt. Who? Like his his receivers are not getting separation. He doesn't have any time to pass. I don't know if that's on him, that's on the offensive line, or that's on the scheme. I don't know, but he's dropping back and he's already on. He's already running, like you know. And this is uh, this is supposed to be a quarterback league. <laughs> it's supposed to be a passing league, and he doesn't have any time. So, yeah, I'm swiping left on all three people. It's amazing to me how much the offensive line has regressed this year. Lewinsky is now with big money signing, right? He's now a bench player. You got Evan Neal taking shots at the fans. You got Andrew Thomas who's not playing. Now, now granted, Andrew Thomas is the left tackle. Okay, so maybe having a healthy Andrew Thomas changes the complexion. But the rest of the line is pretty friggin' shit. Schmitz is terrible. Schmitz has been absolutely terrible. I know we were talking to Danny the beginning of the year. He was the guy to watch. Schmitz has been awful. Absolutely awful. And then you try and get creative. The one time you try and get creative, let's do the tush push. You hurt two offensive linemen. <laughs> two guys got hurt on the play. <laughs> it was your guy. You know the team had to stop the Eagles. Good job. You did it. If you want to do that, the offensive line is just an absolute fucking train wreck. And whatever went well last year is going wrong this year. And I think, I still believe in Joe Shane. I still believe in Brian Dayball. They will get it fixed. But, like, this season is O-V-A over. Swipe left or swipe right. Number two, Matt Jones as a starting quarterback in the National Football League. Uh, Well, he can't, I'm going to swipe left because he can't start for me. I mean, come on. Wouldn't the, pa- wouldn't the Patriots be better off if they straight traded him straight up for Josh Dobbs right now? Mm. Straight up. Oof. Straight up. No? Oof. Really? Uh, Dobbs looks way more confident than Matt <laughs> Jones does. And he's not um, punching people in the dick. I mean, listen, he's not he's not he's he's in the Daniel Jones boat, really. I mean, he's just he's what he is. He's okay. And again, those receivers in New England are not getting separation, but he's also making poor decisions. Like, you cannot roll right and then throw left. You can't do that. Like, you, you cannot do that in professional football. No. I mean, come on. That's a bad, bad idea. Um, but, you know, him getting benched, I expect him to get benched again. And I think this Belichick error is coming to an end in New England. It's clear to see why they won all their championships. It was not... Belichick. The Belichick era is becoming the Belichick error in the past few years. Mm-hmm. Getting rid of Tom Brady turned out to be a really bad idea. But I'm swiping. I'm going to swipe begrudgingly. I'm going to swipe right on Matt Jones. 
He's still young. There's still time for him to get better. So in this offense, no. It's very vanilla, very dink and dunk. And he is not a mobile quarterback. So he has to be a pocket passer. The offensive line needs to be better. Patriots receivers need to get separation. Use your tight ends. You have tight ends, right? You, you invested in several tight ends. So Mac Jones needs to learn how to make better decisions. If you can get any, any spec of mobility out of him, you'll be better served. But as of right now, <laughs> no. he's like a really bad Eli Manning. Like he's like Eli Eli on a bad day. Eli on a good day is a world beater. But Eli on a bad day, you're questioning lots of things. Like is he adopted? <laughs> Wait, what is he really a Manning? I know he looks like a Manning, but is he really a Manning? Right. It's just there are not enough flashes to justify Matt Jones being a court starting quarterback. This year is kind of an aberration because he's he, he's rating better than Joe Burrow, but Joe Burrow on a bad cap. So Joe Burrow on one leg is worse than Matt Jones. There's a news flash for you. Zach Wilson is worse than Matt Jones. I could have told you that. But he's definitely, he definitely feels like a throwback. He feels like a bygone era. You know, he feels like that pocket passer that doesn't really play in the league anymore. You need more mobility. You need more athleticism. He's a good, you know, he's a football player, but not an athlete. And that's why Tua and Jalen Hurts are lapping him right now. Not only are they supremely talented, but they're also athletic. And that's going to hamper him. So whether that's him getting in the weight room, getting in, doing more agility agility drills, you know, just sprint speed, whatever he needs to do, like, that's going to make his life better. Because as a pocket passer, he just isn't it. And it's going to continue this way if he doesn't make some kind of change. Are you in need of air care maintenance or service? I have the company for you. Air Care Technicians. They service the Westchester and Northern Bronx area and can help you with all your heating and cooling maintenance and service needs. Just give them a call at 914-315-1547. Again, that's 914-315-1547. 1547 or shoot them an email at aircaretechnicians at gmail.com. These guys are the real deal as they are veteran owned, licensed, and insured. Make sure to tell them that DNZ sent you. The Fade Store presents the alleged superstar of the week award. Boys and girls, you know what time it is. It's time for the alleged superstar of the week. You, we put up a poll on our X account at Fade Route DNZ, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote. And the winner of said vote gets a shout out on this here show and the coveted ass trophy. And do you know who took home the coveted ass trophy, D? <laughs> I don't. Me <laughs> neither, because I forgot to put the poll up. <laughs> Make good coming, I promise. But my fuck up was last week. This is this week. What are your nominees for Alleged Superstar of the Week, D? All right. Well, first up is the Commanders. You let the winless Chicago Bears come into your house on Thursday Night Football and drop 40 on you. And you gave up 45 fantasy points to DJ Moore. Oh, awful. Commanders, you're my Alleged Superstar of the Week. Number two. Brian Dayball. <laughs> the Giants have led for a total of 18 seconds all year. Yeah. We're in going into week five, man. The Seahawks come across the country on Monday Night Football. Not fair, not fair to the Seahawks at all. And blow you out. 
What you're doing is not working. Brian Dable, you are my other superstar of the week. Last one, the New York Yankees officially finishing the season in third place in your division, missing the playoffs, and nobody loses their job. Come on, man. Even Gabe Kapler got fired. Boone and Cashman are coming back next year. What a joke. New York Yankees, you are my alleged superstars of the week. What do you got, Z? Oh, my goodness. Where do we begin? Where we both... We definitely... The Yankees were definitely a big one for me. I'm going to start with Evan Neal. Oh. (laughs) Now, I really wanted him coming out of Alabama. He's proven to be a really bad offensive lineman at the pro level. Blocked Darren Waller, who's on the Giants, which led to a a sack and a pick. So, there's that. There's the play. But the post game is even worse. As he's leaving the field, he's encouraging the fans to boo louder. So, you're already poking the bear. Don't poke the bear. The Giant fans are some of the most loyal in the league. Don't poke them in. If they're playing, if you're playing like shit, they're gonna call you out on. That's New York sports, baby. The St. St. Louis. You want <sighs> you want your ass kissed? You go play in St. Louis. The post game is even worse. The post game is even worse. A lion does not concern himself with the opinions of sheep. Who are they to judge me? They're a bunch of hamburger flippers and hot dog flippers. Whoa. Yeah. Those hamburger and hot dog flippers, they come to watch you you play. Right? How are you better than them? They're, you're, they're watching you play the way you're playing. You're no better than anybody, man. And he issued this half-assed apology about how he came from humble beginnings. Clearly, somebody forgot that in the moment. <laughs> When you're calling everybody hamburger and hot dog flippers. That's, yeah. That's pretty bad, Evan. Evan Neal, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Billy Epler. Not only resigning from the GM position of the New York Mets. After one up year and one down year. But... There are reports now that you manipulated the IL. And you're pro- there's probably going to be an organizational fine coming. Major League Baseball is investigating <laughs> the Mets now. Thank you, Billy. Thank you for that. And then you can buck. You can buck Showalter. And buck comes out. And this is a little out of turn for buck. I, I, will, I will say that it is out of turn for buck saying that he wanted to bench Daniel Vogel back so many times but he was told by Epler to play him <laughs> what <laughs> what <laughs> what are you kidding me that's a double egg on your face what are you doing what are you doing Billy you ran up the bill You traded all those guys out. You're playing this one guy. And now, Major League Baseball is investigating the Mets. What the hell, man? What the actual hell? Billy Epler, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And last but not least, the San Francisco Giants. What the hell are you doing firing Gabe Kaplan? Seriously. I don't understand. Did did Gabe Kapler not bring you success? He didn't bring you a ring. He's not Bruce Bruce Bochy, but it did he not keep this team afloat? Is he not doing the job that you asked of him? It's not his fault that you're rebuilding. That's that's not on him. Zaidi, that's kinda on you. And you brought in Gabe Kapler. So, 
what I'm reading between I'm reading between the lines there that he's doing this to save his own ass. So that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, 78 and 81 this year. Okay. 81 and 81 the year before with a relatively strapped roster. But you're also 107 and 55 in 2021. You're not that far removed from 107 and 55. I don't see this as a good move. San Francisco Giants, you are my alleged superstar of the week. I think we said our piece. Go to our X account at Fade Route DNZ and vote and vote and vote and vote. And I promise I'll put the poll up this time. And for our nominees. Just do better, boys. Just do better. Podcast has its own merch line now. Go to the Fade Store with DNZ.com today for all your fade route merch needs. I'm talking tank tops, t-shirts, sweatshirts, like yoga pants, we got those too. Like some cool accessories, we got those too. And we're not done yet. We have so much more planned for you, but check out what we have today at the Fade Store with DNZ.com. That's the Fade Store with DNZ.com. Let's run the option and give you our picks for the week. It is the option for week five. And if you want to play along with us, go to our Instagram account at Fade Route Podcast. Click on that link in bio. Go to our CBS Sports Pick'em League, also titled The Option and sign up and play along with us today. We've had a pretty competitive year so far. All of us are separated by about two points. Two. Two. Not too shabby. In first place, you have the lovely Rita Sanchez with 39 points. You and I are tied for second with 37. Foxy rounding up the top four with 36 points. Tricky time now. These are now bye weeks. Let's see what you got. On the bye this week, you have the Browns, the Chargers, the Seahawks, and the Bucks. We're going to discount the Thursday night game. We all picked the Commanders, and boy, did we look stupid. But let's go to Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. We're back in London. Um... It was at Wembley last week. It's at Tottenham this week. The two and two Jags at the three and one Buffalo Bills. Bills. I'm torn by this because the Jags have been in all week. So they're acclimated. That's like the one thing that gives me pause about this. But yeah, the Falcons did not look great last week. So I'm going to go with the Bills as well. I think they're just a superior team to the Falcons. One o'clock. The two and two Houston Texans go into Hot Atlanta to take on the two and two Falcons. And how is the NFL doing them so dirty like this? You did London, and now you have another game. That's messed up. Uh, uh, Falcons. I'm taking the Texans. I'm taking the Texans too. I think the NFL did the Falcons dirty here. I really think that they should have gotten the bye after going to London. Especially knowing that the Jaguars are there for two weeks in a row. No, that's not cool. Not cool at all. The 0-4 Panthers at the 3-1 Detroit Lions. It's the Kitten Bowl. <laughs> Lions. Lions roar. Panthers 0-5. And, and I wonder if they wonder if they made a mistake with Bryce Young. The 2-2 two two Titans at the 2-2 two two Indianapolis Colts. Colts. All 
I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the Titans. I think that Derrick Henry started something. I think he's gonna keep rolling. The Colts. Eh, I think he keep rolling, rolling, rolling. The Colts. I don't know what the hell's going on there. Like they should have. They should have beaten the Rams last week, but didn't. The one in three New York football Giants going to Miami to take on the three and one Dolphins. Oh jeez. Oh. Miami. No. Oh. How can you not, right? The Giants just look so terrible. The Dolphins got exposed a little bit, but Wink Martindale's defense is not good enough to to do it like the Bills did. So Dolphins pretty handy. The two and two Saints going to Foxborough to take on the one and three New England Patriots. Saints. Saints as well. These are, it's pretty clear. The Patriots are not great. Right? So, over under three quarters for Bailey Zappi next week. Uh, under. Under. Under three quarters? You think Max going to play the whole game? Mm-hmm. I don't care. You're going to stick with him. It's not going to get ugly like Dallas did. You hope so. You hope so. If you're a Patriots fan. The three and one Ravens go into Pittsburgh in an AFC North battle to take on the two and two Pittsburgh Steelers. Ravens. Yeah, that seems pretty straightforward. Like, Kenny Pickett's not great, and Kenny Pickett is hurt, so <laughs> that's you know he's going to play, but you have a wounded Kenny Pickett against the Baltimore Ravens. It doesn't matter who you put in the purple and black. You're the Baltimore Ravens. Four and one for the bird. We're into the four o'clock hour. The one and three Bengals go into the desert to take on the one and three Arizona Cardinals. Cards. I'm going to go with the Cardinals too. Joe Burrow is not healthy. Joe Burrow is not healthy. When is Zach Taylor going to pull the plug? We started it. And then around the horn and PTI picked it up. So, yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. Cardinals pretty easily. The 4 and 0 Eagles at the 2 and 2 Rams. Eagles. Eagles. <sighs> fly Eagles fly, unfortunately. 5 and 0. If Stafford is hurt, he's hampered with a hip injury. That could be a major problem. <laughs> this next one. The Nathaniel Hackett Bowl. The one and three Jets go into the mile high to take on the one and three Denver Broncos. I'm taking the Jets. The Jets have to win this game. They have to. They have to. That's mean they will. I'm going to take the Broncos. I think Russ is going to torch. Robert Sala's defense. Oh my gosh, that would be crazy. I think he's going to torch him. Absolutely torch him. And then the meta, you know, the metaphorical finger, middle finger at the end of the game for Sean Payton. So Broncos, pretty handily. The three and one Chiefs go into Minnesota to take on the one and three Minnesota Vikings. Chiefs. Chiefs as well. Minnesota's not good. Chiefs are very good. Possibly the game of the week could end up being the game of the year. Your Sunday night special. The three and one Cowboys go into Santa Clara to take on the four and oh San Francisco 49ers. 49ers. I'm taking the Niners as well. Like they're a good team. They're much better than the Cowboys. Christian McCaffrey, have a day. Have a day. And your Monday night delight. The two and two Packers go into Allegiant Stadium to take on the one and three Las Vegas Raiders with Jimmy Garoppolo under center. Uh, it doesn't matter. Packers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with the Packers as well. Just the Raiders are the Raiders and the Raiders are not good. <laughs> and as a reminder, the Browns, the Chargers, the Seahawks, and the Bucks are all on a bye. Adjust your fantasy rosters accordingly. 
This has been the Fade Route with DNZ. Thanks for tuning in. Catch our podcast on Wednesday nights on Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to your podcast. So until, until next time, stay faded, everyone. Time for us to run the go route. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you like what you heard and want to hear more, be sure to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Rate us five stars. Leave us a review. Turn on subscription notifications and tell your friends. Spread the word. Spread it wide.